now is much better. Yeah? Because I always say, raise your voice. So people can hear you, people can move with you, and authorities will respond and will, how can I say, will obey to you. Is it good exp uh, expression or no? So, dear brothers and sisters, when we talk about human rights, we should know that this human rights means freedom, equality, democracy, rule of law, justice, equality. All the human rights values that is in the international chapter, the United Nations Declaration. All the human rights articles there, it's our values that we all should struggle for and that we all should struggle to achieve. In all over the world and also in our societies. And that is exactly what we did and that we, that we dream for in the Arab Spring countries and in Yemen in particular. We suffered a lot from injustice. We suffered a lot from poverty, from war, from lack of education, from lack of access to the water, to the service, from corruption. And we saw that it's our basic it's our basic right to have a good governance. It's our basic right to have our right to live without corruption, to live with dignity. But of course, it will not be like this under the rule of dictatorship, under the rule of corruption. We getting bored as a people, as women, as youth, of all that deterioration in every field around us. In the security field, in the economic field, in political field. And we knew where is the problem. We tried a lot, a lot, a lot to make reforms to ask for reforms. But unfortunately, the authority didn't respond to us. Didn't make any improvement. All what they did is the de deterioration. I started my journey for, as a human rights defender with the expression rights as a journalist, as a woman journalist. When I started my first article, I said, I told myself, what can I do? What should I write? I should do something for my country. I shouldn't stay away and ask for help. So I decided to say the truth and to put my fingers in the face of the problem, which is the face of the dictator himself, who is Ali Abdullah Saleh. So I started my journey on the political articles against him as a dictator, and that was very strange in my country. As a woman, write articles, political articles, and the very tough articles against the dictator. And that opened a big gate for a lot of people, for a lot of human rights defenders, journalists, on talking about corruption and human rights violation and the wars 
that has been there everywhere. The wars was the way of the dictator himself to remain in his chair. So my journey was with the, as a journalist, and also after that, as a human rights defender for expression rights. Because I believe, and I still believe, that any democratic country will not be a real democratic country if they don't have a full expression rights. Real expression rights. So because of that, I established with a number of journalists uh, an organization called Women Journalists Without Chains. Before that, it was, we called it Women Journalists Without Borders. But the regime was very afraid of this organization because we announced it as international organization and a lot of journalists around the world started to be member with us. Then he blockade it. Then we told them, okay, you block this one, we will make another one with a beautiful and stronger name, which is without chains. And that was our gate for making a real change. Real change. And this is what I call for every youth around the world. For every person for every individual who want to make a change it's very important when you want to make change first to own your dream to have your dream and after that you have to own your foundation change by foundations either you be member or establish your own institutions that you can make change through. And this is what we did through our Women Journalists Without Chains. With Women Journalists Without Chains, we make a lot of, a lot of change, a lot of struggle for human rights in, in general and expression rights in particular. A lot of reports, a lot of conferences, a lot of, but the most important thing that we used, which is the peaceful struggle, peaceful movement, encouraging Yemeni people who own more than, more than 70 million piece of weapons to use another tool for asking for human rights which is the peaceful way. And we were, as women, in the first line. We were few numbers of women members in this organization and victims every Tuesday making peaceful sitting and peaceful demonstration against the violation against the newspapers, website, etc., and against the human rights in general. We made a great peaceful movement, and we didn't give up. We were alone. I was alone, carrying microphone in my country, calling people to wake up, wake up every day to sit, to stand with me and with the victims against the dictator, against all the deterioration in my country. We were alone, but we were armed with our will and dream for gaining the freedom. So that was a very important armed army with us a very important weapons, which is our dream for freedom. And also which is the peaceful struggle with us. 
And when we raise our voice for human rights, we, our, we raise our voice for human rights, the international human rights values, and also the human rights in our constitution. After that, still the regime didn't listen to us. The human rights violation continue and continue and continue. And when I speak about Yemen, I speak also about Egypt. I speak also about Libya, about Tunis, about Syria. That those people who made the great peaceful revolutions in 2011, Arab Spring, those people getting bored from corruption, from tyrannies, got bored from poverty. They got bored from putting them under the umbrella, under the slogan that they are terrorists, while they are a very peaceful people that want development, want peace, and want justice. And when all of us, all the countries, when we decided to make peaceful revolution in 2011, it came as something, it's, it's really needed. It came after a huge struggle, after years and years of struggle, calling for reforms, but they didn't make any reforms. So we decided to make the peaceful revolution, which is Arab Spring. And with our peaceful Arab Spring, that all of you saw in your TVs, huge number, millions number of women and men went to the street, demonstrate, sing, إذا الشعب يوما أراد الحياة فلا بد أن يستجيب القدر ولا بد للليل أن ينجلي ولا بد للقيد أن ينكسر This was our song in all Arab countries which is, means if I can translate if the people want to live the destiny will respond. And the night will gun, and the chains will break. And this was only our songs in front of all kinds of violence from the dictators. In Tunis, in Libya, in Yemen, and in Syria even, before it turned to the armed, to the war, because of the silence of the world. So again, our people in Arab Spring, and now we are in the February 2011, and it's just days. We in Yemen will celebrate our seventh anniversary of our peaceful revolution on coming 11 February which is also the day of the step down of Hosni Mubarak, the dictator of Egypt. And also, days ago, it was the seventh anniversary of the Tunisian revolution on, 5th, on January 15th. So you should know as a student that those people who struggle for their freedom and justice is still continue their struggle for freedom and justice. And all the chaos that you hear and listen and watch, it is not caused by the Arab Spring. It's caused by the tyrannies. It's caused by the counter-revolution. It's caused by those people who've been harmed by the change who against the change. Not because of that peaceful people who struggled many years before the revolution 
and still struggle now against all this kind of chaos. So this chaos is not the result of the will of the, and dream of people for freedom. No, it's counter-revolution. And this is what we now suffer in Yemen. Now my country is suffering from ugly war. And every day you listen to the news and know what is happening in Yemen. Yes, there is war in Yemen. Ugly war in Yemen. Ugly counter-revolution in Yemen. Led by the, led by the militia of Al-Houthi, which has alliance with the ousted President Ali Saleh, who been killed by them before months, and backed from Iran, from one side, and from other side, counter-revolution that led by Saudi and Emirates. Both of them, they don't want our Arab Spring to win. Both of them, they don't want our peaceful revolution to win. Both of them want Yemen to continue weak or to continue in chaos because they want Yemen. They don't want Yemen to be a democratic country. So now Yemen is suffering from war that caused this ugly and this very serious humanitarian crisis. People been de died every day. People under hunger, under famine, under disease. Still lack of education. Still lack of water. So all this deterioration came after our great winning of peaceful revolution. By our peaceful revolution, we could step down the dictator in Yemen, Ali Saleh. We step him down. We forced him to, to resign. By peaceful revolution, we forced Hasni Mubarak also to resign. By peaceful revolution, we forced Ben Ali in Tunis to escape. So, and after that, with the transitional period, with the transitional period, we make a lot of, a lot of victory. We were really committed to the values that we announced before the revolution and inside the revolution. So you as a student who want to know the truth, he should read the draft of constitution that we wrote as revolutionary in Yemen, in Tunis, in Egypt, even in Libya. Most of this constitutions was committed and put most of the human rights values inside. All our problems that, were, that we suffered from the dictators, we tried, we tried to solve it in our constitutions. In Yemen, our draft, great draft constitutions had the, unfortunately, faced the coup on 2014, this coup, as I said, led by the Houthis, militia of Al Houthi, they were, they made alliance with the dictator Ali Saleh, and they had a big backing from Iran. And after that, Saudi and the Emirates came, and they said, "Oh, we want to help Yemenis to face the Iranian interfere." We want to help the legitimate president, Abdurrahman Rabbah Mansour Hadi, that we vote for him to lead the country after the dictator Ali Saleh. They announced that, that, but the reality, they don't. The reality that they are now trying to occupy in Yemen. They used 
the coup as the benefit, the coup, the ugly coup of Houthi militia against our legitimate president, against the country, as a cause to interfere in our sovereignty, and also to make chaos, to create the war. Now, they put our president, Abdurrahman Mansour Hadi, under the home arrest in Riyadh. He can't return to Yemen. They didn't allow him to, to return to Yemen, to 80% of free land. They create militias in the liberated cities, which is 80%. Now Yemeni free 80% of Yemen from the coup of militia of Al-Houthi. But Saudi and Emirates, they create militias inside these liberated cities. And they occupy the most important lands, islands, and ports, and airports. They see to Yemen is a big wealth, something they can't imagine. Yemen is in the very important geographic place, has a very good, a very great geostrategic place, and has more than 2,000 kilometers in the beach, and has a lot of wealth in oil, gold. So it's a good chance for them to control Yemen with this chaos. A good chance. So they betrayed Yemenis. They betrayed our president who asked their help, but they put him now in Riyadh and they did, they make every day a lot of problems, a lot of killing in my country. But I will tell you something. Why I said in the beginning that I am so happy and I, in every meeting with students, I feel myself with the students. Because the people who make the peaceful revolution and who made a great change in Arab Spring in general, and in Yemen in particular is the student. I told you that I was alone. We were alone before February 11, 2011, with our long journey against the dictator because I was with victims, small number of human rights defenders. But when we decided to make a big change, we stand in front of the gate of Sana'a University, calling the students to wake up and to protect Yemen. And when they woke up, they made it. Now the same thing. Yemeni people still there. Students still there. Youth, women, still there. Neither Saudi, Emirates, nor Iran can break the will of Yemenis. Or any international or any foreign country. None of them. None of them can break the will of people in Yemen, in Egypt, in Syria, in Libya, in Tunis, in Ukraine, in anywhere. In anywhere, in Burma, in anywhere. People, when they decided to take their freedom, they take it. But they have to continue their struggle 
and they shouldn't lose their hope. And this is what we will. And this is what we are doing now. This is what we are doing now. We didn't give up. And we said, tell everyone that they said, oh, Arab Spring died. No, he did. Arab Spring didn't die. Arab Spring still continue. This is the revolutions. You are students. You should look for the truth. You should know the history of the struggle of the nations around the world. Every great revolution followed war with counter-revolution. But who is the victorious after that? Is the people who still insisting on their values, who still insisting on gaining their goals, and this is our destiny. So I will finish my speech with this promise that very soon you will see our countries free from the dictators, from the powers that backed them, from the counter-revolutions, from all the chaos, and the peace will be there. Development will be there because we still there and because we raise our kids to carry our dreams and to continue our way. Thank you so much. Ms. Carmen for that extremely insightful and inspiring speech and I think a big takeaway for me was that there's a lot of strength and power in peace so I think that was absolutely wonderful. Um, we're now going to take some questions from the audience. Uh, we're going to open the floor up to Slido and we're going to take some questions from there. Um, I think the question that's been upvoted yeah. the most is what do you believe are the most humane and effective solutions for the current refugee crisis? Good question. The most important solution, there's a lot of solutions, but the most important solution, solution is helping the people on facing dictators. Because who is the real cause of this refugee? If Bashar al-Assad resign after six months of peaceful revolution of the people of Syria. Would you see all these refugees? If the international community did their work, their duty to the people in Syria, would, will you see all these refugees? So it's very important to know and to make the real solution, the deep solution. Other is important, but this is the most important. To stop refugee is supporting the people on facing the dictators. And those people who are fleeing now from dictators from one hand and from terrorism from other hand, is the solution to block the gates, to don't allow them to enter your countries? Is that fair? Those people are victims from both, from the tyranny and from the terrorists. So instead of put walls in front of them, helping them, support them, open your countries for them, because they are victims. So again and again and again, and I call all the international community the most important solution for refugee isn't putting the walls, isn't denying them, it isn't banning them from entering Europe or America. It's helping them on overthrowing their dictators. 
because the dictator are the resource of terrorism from one hand and all wars from other hand. Thank you, Thank you so much for that answer. Um, another question is, how much is the war for equal rights in the Middle East against dictatorship as opposed to a war against backward values within the Islam ideology? No, of course, it is not against Islam uh, values. And it isn't against any religious values. But it's from another side. It's against those who misuse Islam under the name of Islam. Look, our revolutions had three revolutions in one revolution. One against the dictator himself, second against the bad traditions, third against those, the sheikhs, who misuse the fatwas, who misuse our faith. You know, those people, they made a lot of fatwas that our demonstrations, our revolution is haram. You know, word is haram? Forbidden in, as a religion, you know. They said, you should, as a woman, you should stay at your home. Don't go with men. You should stay at your home. But we as women tell them, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and we led the demonstrations. And this is, as, this is the same thing that also the men did. did. They didn't listen to them. So again, all religions values, all religions values, they encourage people to work, to struggle for their equality and for the freedom. So our battle is against those people who misuse their religions. And that was our battle and it still continue until we win. Another question is, what practical steps can students in the West take to help human rights activists elsewhere? Many things, but the most important thing is raise your voice. Raise your voice for all those people who are suffering from the injustice. Don't leave them alone. And believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Believe that you, as a student, can make a lot. Don't say that I am a student, I just have to read my book and to go to the exam. And No. All the world is waiting for you. All the world is waiting for you. You can make a lot, so don't now with the social media, now with the institutions, with foundations, with Marsh, with everything, you can have a lot of projects, a lot of initiatives, a lot of way to help people around the world. Fight corruption. Not just here in your country. We are a global citizen. We are belonging to this 21st century that we don't believe on that, that we should just care about ourselves. No, this is something out of our thinking as a youth, as a people who belong to this, to the 21st century. So it's our matter to fight corruption everywhere. It's our matter to help human beings everywhere. It's our matter to spread education everywhere. It's our matter to make those people who their voice is not listen, listened to be loud everywhere, to be listened everywhere. So you can make it. And you can create your own way to make it. You're young, you have the technology, 
And all of us are so lucky that we are belong to this area. We are belong to this age, to this 21st century. With Facebook, with Twitter, with YouTube, with all this technology revolution, we can make a lot, a lot, a lot. So, don't afraid from change. Lead the change. Be in the front line and create the foundations. Be a member with the foundation. Be a member in political parties, in the economic organization, in any kind of, be active in your society. Be active in your society. And again, don't forget that you are a global citizen. And your duty is for every human in this land, in our earth. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so our next question will be, what do you cite as a central reason for the way in which the Yemen crisis has been so absent from political and public discourse in the West? Unfortunately, Yemen is a forgotten land. And really when I said that it's a forgotten land, it's a real forgotten land. But also when I saw what's happening in Syria, that is every day, it's yeah, in the media every day and there is a lot of initiatives and, and nothing happened. I said, oh my God, even either that you are forgotten land or mentioned land, nobody, you know, the, the international community didn't do their duty. This is... Unfortunately, the international community is a way from achieving its duty to the humanity. Not just to the Yemen. But of course, Yemen, because Saudi and Arabia is there, uh, and Emirates is there, and the money play a lot of role on that, from one side. And before, and this is special with the Trump, area and before it's because that they want to support Iran because they want Iran to sign on the nuclear agreement so either with Obama or with Trump Yemen is forgetting land unfortunately with Obama because Obama wants Iran to sign with the nuclear agreement so he didn't make any effort for stopping the coup against Yemen backed by Iran. With Trump, because of Saudi and Emirates paid a lot of money, he's now Yemen still forgetting land. But in general, all this deterioration, all this hatred, all this war is because that the international community, the United Nations itself is a way from its rule to save the humanity. They are, we, we, we gain a lot of victories when the humanity established UN. UN established to protect the human beings. But now we say, we see a lot of deterioration, a lot of war everywhere. In Myanmar, against Rohingya people, in Syria, in Yemen, everywhere. A lot of people in prison. A lot of women are suffering. A lot of deterioration. And there is another thing, which is hatred. And racism is also become more and more. And why is that? Because those who control, those who is in the head of those international community, they don't really know their duties. They prefer their interests more than their values. But we, you and I, all the people like us around the world should not lose our hope, should remain them, 
should pressure, make a lot of pressure. When Trump decided to make the Muslims ban, hundreds, thousands of American people went to the street, said no to him. And that is a very important waking from the American. And that movement will continue. So you should be also remember your duty. Don't let your government away from your observation. Don't let them attack your values by silence, by conspiracy, by supporting dictators. One of the reasons of, our, of the wars in our countries is the supporting of the, some of the international community to the dictators after we made the revolution against them. They're supporting the coup in Egypt, for example. They supported Sisi on his coup against the Egyptian will and dream and movement for freedom. The same thing in Yemen. They still supported Saudi Emirates and silence with the Iran. But now I want to make announcement from this a very important, you know, meeting and and gathering and in this very important university. We will not lose our hope and we will not be quiet. So from now and from Britain, then I will move to France and other countries. We will start our movement to hold Mohammed bin Salman and Mohammed bin Zayed to be accountable. سنرفع قضايا على محمد بن سلمان ومحمد بن زايد لكي يكونوا تحت العدالة الدولية. I don't know how can I say it in English, but I will try to translate it. If anyone can help me on this. But we will rise, file. How can I say it in Arabic? في حد يتكلم معي هنا عربي؟ هولي يعني حنرفع قضايا حنطالب بمحاكمتهم دوليا. اوكي. We will trial them. We will trial them. We will now I am calling all the human rights defenders to start trial those people who are committed to the massacres in my country, Yemen, especially Yemen. I will speak as a Yemeni from Yemen. I'm calling all human rights defenders now to be with us on trial. Muhammad bin Salman and Muhammad bin Zayed because they are committed with the big crime in my country. We will do the same thing with the militia of Al Houthi. We will not forget them and Iran. But now first is Mohammed bin Salman and Mohammed bin Zayed because they betrayed Yemeni people. Every day, people are dying, suffering inside Yemen because of their conspiracy from the beginning and because of their continued war on Yemen. So we will, inshallah, very soon trial them inside Britain, inside Europe, inside America, inside International Criminal Court. And remember that this announcement when they came from this university, and this is honor, big honor for you. <laughs> thank you. Unfortunately, that um, we've reached the end of the Q and A. So thank you very much for answering all of our questions. Um, there were some great questions, so thank you from the audience. Um, there's still time for Miss Carmen to answer some more questions, and our team will be uh, asking her in um, afterwards. Um, 
So, and that video can be found on YouTube. So if you want to see um, Ms. Carmen answer more questions, please just look up um, Work Economic Summit on YouTube. Um, so can I ask the delegates who have um, signed up to meet Ms. Carmen to uh, quietly leave the auditorium and go to OC 104 uh, for your chance to ask us some more questions. So please, everyone, join me in a round of applause for our Nobel Prize winner. <laughs>